Hi, welcome to the Carter B40 scrubber dryer training video. This is the Carter B40 and this one has the 20 inch scrubbing head on it. It's also available with a 17 inch head. It has clean water which goes into a water tank here. The clean water passes down onto the front scrubbing pad or brush. That will scrub and clean the floor. And then as the machine moves forward, the dirty water comes to the back of the machine and this squeegee unit here is fixed on the back sucks all that dirty water up into the waste tank on the top of the machine. The pads or brushes <coughs> come like this. So this is like Velcro, the pads stick on there and they can just tuck under these little triangles here just to keep them in place. And it has a, a locking system here and that slides under the machine get it central and then lift each side and it just clips into place like so and then that's ready to go. To release the pad you press this big grey lever here and that pushes that pad down and then you can just slide it out again. There are two versions of this machine, one's with automatic drive where it drives itself, the other one is it just gets pulled along by the rotation of the brush. If you have the one that gets pulled along, this little grey dial here, you can adjust and it adjusts the angle of the, of the pad um, so that it either pulls the machine stronger or it pulls the machine less. This particular model has a drive on it and the yellow lever up here, push it forward, the machine drives forward. If I pull it backwards, the machine drives itself backwards. At the back of the machine, you have the squeegee unit here. So it's got rubber squeegee blades on it. If the squeegee blades um, wear out after a while, they've got a nice sharp edge on there, after a while that edge might wear out. You can simply undo these grey things here, each side, pull off this black bit here and these blades will just slide out and you can turn them over, slide them back in and then you've got another good edge. Once both edges are worn, top and bottom, you can just replace it, put new squeegee blades in. When you're using the machine, you might find sometimes bits of dirt and dust get caught up in here. And if that happens, you might find you're getting streaks of dirty water coming out the back of the machine. So if you find you are getting streaks, just get a, keep a bit of tissue on the machine. You can just keep it up here or somewhere or on here. Uh, and just every now and then, just stop, give the blades a little wipe and that will just stop you having streaks when you're cleaning. So there's a couple of wing nuts here to put this on. You just pop the hose onto the pipe, loosen off these wing nuts, lift up the black part here and slide that over, over these bits here. That goes into place and then just tighten up the wing nuts. And now that squeegee bar is ready to go. So I'll put this thing back on. There's a little yellow dial on here and that adjusts the angle of the squeegee bar. So this lever here will pull the squeegee down onto the floor. And that's now sitting nice and level. If the edges are squashed down too far down, you can simply adjust this to bring them up to a nice flat level. And the other way, if the middle of the squeegee is off the floor here, you can adjust this until you get a nice flat squeegee level. So to operate the machine, have this lever down so that the squeegee is on the floor. And then there's a foot pedal here, push that down to the side and that will put the brush or the, or the pad down on the floor. And then when we're cleaning along like so, you'll have it scrubbing and drying the floor in operation. This part of the machine we have the controls. So where you see yellow touch points, these are daily user control points on the machine. Where you see grey touch points, then they are uh, maintenance touch points if you like. So this lever here drives the machine forward, drives the machine back. If it's a machine that doesn't have drive, this lever would simply turn on the brush. This dial here does your, uh, your speed of the machine. 
So there's a little indicator there for driving. So you can have the machine set to drive slowly, medium, fast, depends how you like to clean. Obviously the slower you go, the more thorough a clean you will get. Here's a dial indicator here, uh, currently in the off position. You can switch it to the first position here, which is transport mode. In transport mode, this machine basically won't put any water down, won't scrub, won't vac, it will just simply drive. So use that to get from place to place when you're not cleaning. The second one here is eco mode. Eco mode will operate the brushes and the vacuum and put the water down, but it runs the vacuum at a reduced speed. So the machine will be quieter, so it's good for noise sensitive areas, although it won't be sucking up quite as much. So if you're trying to do a good deep clean, um, you may want to go onto this step here, which is the full wash and dry mode. So in this mode, you're putting water down, you're scrubbing and you're vacuuming, and everything's on full power. Onto this mode here is scrubbing and water only, so you're not vacuuming up. If you've got some real stubborn dirt to clean, it's a good idea just to put the brush down, put some water on, and then scrub and clean the floor without sucking up the water. Leave the squeegee up bar up, and then let that soak for a few minutes, and then go back to full mode, put the squeegee bar down, and then go over and suck it all up and dry it. And that's really good for getting rid of stubborn dirt. This mode here is vacuum only. So if you've just got a puddle to suck up and you don't need to clean the floor, you can set it to vacuum only, leave the brush up, put the squeegee bar down, and then that will just suck up uh, puddles of water. The final one there is polish. So with this one, you can put some soft pads on the machine. It doesn't put any water down. It will just simply just run a pad on the floor like a buffing machine and will just polish your floor for you. You wouldn't need your squeegee down for that either. There's an operator key that goes in the machine that just slides down into here like so. So without this key in place, these dials won't do anything. You won't be able to operate the machine. So if this is being left somewhere where you don't want people to use the machine, you can just take the key away and people can't use it. And you slot that in there like so. The dial here and this little button here just gives you some basic information on the machine. When you first turn it on, it runs a self-test, checks a few functions, just tells you when the next service is due, and then it tells you the battery life, how much battery is left on its charge, uh, and at the moment it's telling us we're in transport mode. You can press the information button here, and turn the dial, uh, that will tell you what speed setting we have at the moment, so if I turn the speed up and down, that just tells you what speed we've got that on. Um, that's really all the functions you have on that. Just to the side here, you've got your water flow rate, so you can have a small amount of water coming out and you can adjust it up to a large amount of water coming out. So just adjust that as you need it. Um, down here, as we've said, is the pedal. Now on this side of the machine is a clean water tank drain cap. So it's recommended once a week you drain the clean water out of the machine. If you're using soaps and chemicals in there and they just stay there for a week or two weeks, they can sort of congeal into a gel uh, or if you're using powders and things, um, and then they can start going down the pipes and blocking up pipes. So it's recommended at least once a week, if not more, unscrew this cap and just let everything come out of that clean water tank and then you refill it. If you do have problems with water flow, you find there's water, not much water coming out, just on the other side of this cap is a clean water filter. So take that cap off, obviously water's going to gush out, so do it outside, and just have a look at the filter on the other side of there. You may need just to go to a tap and rinse it, something like that. This yellow cap here is where you can put the clean water into the machine. And if you're using detergents, then mix your detergents in with water in there. Uh, some machines also have a dosing system. This machine doesn't have it fitted, but if you do, your dosing bottle just fits in there and it has a feed pipe and it will take, take the uh, chemicals straight from there and it will mix the water for you. If you've got the machine for a long time, um, some machines will have wet batteries and some machines will have gel batteries. This little lever here just enables you to lift the, up, the tank up here. Um, now, the way to tell with batteries if they're wet or gel is if you've got caps that you can remove and have a look in, then you've got wet batteries. If you've got caps like these ones that you can't pull off, 
then that's a set of gel batteries. So they're maintenance free, they don't need to do anything with those batteries. But if you've got wet lead acid batteries in there, pop the caps off, have a little look. There will be metal plates in there, the lead plates, and if you can see those and there's no water above them, they'll need topping up. And you just want to top it up to about one centimetre higher than the metal plates. Um, don't fill it all the way to the top, just one centimetre above the, level, the, the metal plates in there. Keep an eye on the pads if you're using a pad on the machine. You can flip pads over, you can rinse them out, you can reuse them, but after time they will wear down. And if they do wear all the way down, you could end up rubbing off the Velcro that the pad sticks to, uh, and that can also cause scratching of the floor. So something just to be aware of, of how worn your pads are. You can give them a rinse and keep them clean. Once you've finished cleaning, your clean water would have drained out, it would have all been sucked up into the dirty tank and you're going to have a dirty tank full of waste water. So your dirty tank is the top one up here. All your waste to come into here. It's nice, easy to get in there and give it a good clean out and after each use you should always empty that tank and give it a good rinse. You, if, you, if you've got things in this tank that are going to smell, this will blow that smell out into your environment. So you might find you have a smelly machine going around making the whole place smell. So keep, very important, keep this tank nice and clean. Um, any big bits of dirt and debris and stuff like that that have been sucked up into the machine will get caught in this little tray here, which you can take out and just tip away. Some machines might have an auto rinse feature on them up here. This machine doesn't. It is an optional extra on some machines. Um, if you do have that, then there's a, a plug where you simply plug your hose onto it and it will just rinse the tank. This hose here is the dirty water drain hose. So once you finish your machine, just take it outside or somewhere where there's a, a drain in the floor, pop the cap off, just empty it down the drain. Um, when you put it back, make sure this cap is on. If this cap gets left off, uh, when you've got the vac running, it will be sucking air in through here and you won't get any suction through the squeegee blade. So it's very important to keep that cap on, make sure you've got proper suction down at the squeegee. The Karcher B40 comes with an onboard battery charger. So this particular one here has a European plug with an adapter. This goes on like so, which can then put it onto a UK plug. Um, and this is basically the charger lit cable. So you can just take that off there, pull the lead off here, plug it into any normal plug socket, wherever the nearest one is. And once the machine has been put on charge, it will show you up here the, where it is in the charging cycle. It's very important, once you put it on charge, you don't interrupt that machine until the charge is complete. If you do unplug it after it's only been on for a short amount of time and it hasn't fully recharged, that can actually damage the batteries. So once you put it on charge, leave it probably about eight to 10 hours it will take from a flat battery on the machine to being fully charged. Uh, and then after the 8 to 10 hours, it will show you on here it's fully charged and you know it's good to unplug that then and you can use the machine again. The run time on this machine, probably somewhere around two and a half hours, maybe three hours, it just depends on a uh, couple of different battery size options on these machines and it depends on how rough your floor is, so it does vary. But if you say on average, two and a half to three hours for one of these machines. A few final things with the scrubber dryers, and this does apply to almost all scrubber dryers. First of all, if you're filling it with a bucket rather than a hose, make sure you use a clean bucket. If you use an old mop bucket or something that's got dirt in it and then you pour that into the clean water tank, then that dirt could get into the filters and the pipes and it will clog the machine. You'll find then that you get poor water flow and those sort of problems. Uh, additionally, when you're putting water in, make sure you only put cold water into the machine. Water over, I think it's about 68 degrees, uh, will cause lime scale in, inside the tanks. That lime scale then will flake off the tank and again it will block the filters and block the pipes. Also, if you put hot water in the tank, most of those water tanks are surrounding the batteries. And if you heat up the batteries when they're charging, they will dry out and you'll find, especially with the gel batteries, that could ruin the batteries. With most machines, you can have a nice selection of different pads and brushes. 
Uh, you can have soft pads for sort of gentle floors where you don't want to damage the floors. You can have medium scrubbing pads or brushes and you can get aggressive pads and brushes. So come to us, ask, do ask and uh, we can help you decide what's probably the best things for your floor. Um, like I say, there's a wide variety for most machines. Uh, we do normally say that pads would work a lot better on a nice smooth floor. If you've got textured floors or uneven surfaces, then quite often the brushes seem to be the best option. And that really concludes it for the, your training course, um, and good luck.